Today we're going to discuss internal and external air switches and how they work in our septic applications and what their purpose are, uh, how they operate, and also uh, how to test them. So if you're in the field or if someone brings into your store, you can, you can test them and prove that they're bad so people aren't just replacing parts, but they're, they're actually replacing the correct part. Uh, so, as mentioned, there's two different types uh, that we typically use in our systems, uh, internal and external. So, the external is a bulkhead style, which has a nut, and the eighth inch vinyl tubing attaches on the exterior of the control panel, where the interior uh, just installs inside the panel with two screws, and the eighth inch vinyl tubing is normally run through conduit inside the panel. This is the internal is probably the preferred switch since it offers a bit more protection for the tubing and keeps it safe from weed eaters and sunlight, stuff like that. Uh, you'll notice that one has two uh, eighth inch or quarter inch prongs and the other one has three. So the bulkhead one is a bit more versatile because uh, it allows you to set it up as normally open or normally close depending on which one you use. Um, this one is just set up for normally open, uh, which, is, which is how we use it in, the system, in our systems. Uh, essentially, how it works is the eighth inch tubing is attached to the aerator, uh, and it sends air pressure from the aerator into the switch, which is about one to one and a half PSI, so not a whole lot. Uh, inside, there's a plunger system, uh, and so as the air comes in, it pushes on the plunger. Uh, on this micro switch here, there's a small switch and it pushes up on that switch and it energizes it. Uh, the important part about these, and which kind of sep separates them out from a lot of the other manufacturers, or a lot of the other industrial applications like spas, jacuzzis, swimming pools, washing machines, stuff like that, is that these are considered non-latching. So when you have air, it'll, it'll, it'll work. When you take it away, it'll alarm. When you send it back, it'll it'll stop. It'll it'll turn the alarm off again, uh, and that's important because you don't have to cycle anything or kill power or anything like that. Uh, so if it's an intermittent problem, it'll essentially heal itself. Uh, so the way we'll test it, it's going to involve the use of some eighth-inch tubing, which I I have here. You'll place it on to the nipple that's coming off of it securely so that you don't lose anything. And the first thing you can do is just blow into the other end and hold this next to your ear. And you're going to actually hear that plunger move when you apply enough air onto it. Uh, I wouldn't stop the test there if you can't. If you can't, uh, I would move on to the electrical portion because that's still pretty easy to do. And it does definitively say, hey, it's, it's working or no, it's, it's not working. Uh, so we're going to have our multimeter, uh, we're going to set to test our continuity, sorry. Uh, so that's normally the, the horseshoe or the Wi-Fi signal looking symbol. Uh, most meters, uh, they're pretty easy to use and they're not going to, they're not going to cause too much trouble and they're going to tone off when you, when you have continuity or a complete circuit. Uh, so these are connected to both of my leads and You'll hear the sound once we once we close the circuit. It's going to make the noise, and once we take it away, it doesn't work anymore. So because these are these are non-latching, and because these are normally open switches, if we just put it on now, uh, it's going to tone off because it's not receiving any air signal that one one and a half psi. So when I touch this, it's going to tone off. When I take it away, it's going to stop. So what we'll do is we'll apply a small amount of air while blowing into it. And then we're going to put the tester on the two terminals. And we're going to make sure that plunger is working up and down. And we're going to make sure that the micro switch is working as it should as well. Uh, one thing to note is a lot of the problems with these is that plunger over time. They just get gummed up or dirty or they get some debris. Uh, and that's, that's their normal mode of failure. So we'll go through the test cycle right now. And as I'm blowing into it, you'll see that we're testing it with the multimeter and we're getting tone and not.
So this switch tests good as it, as it should, it's brand new. Uh, so this is a great way to, again, to test for your, your customers, make sure they're replacing the right parts and not just, not just replacing parts and wasting their time and money. Uh, as a homeowner, it helps you diagnose your system. It's really easy to do with a, with a pretty cheap multimeter and a little bit of tubing. If you have any questions, please reach out to your manager and they'll answer them for you. Thank you.